Hello, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Mel and the Nostalgic Runner. We are back for another episode of The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, season five, episode um, four, and this is called The Epiphany. And man, what I, yeah. This is seriously, they, they're they they're doing it. This is the best franchise, easily the best franchise. Out of all the franchises that are going right now, Salt Lake City is doing it. And then if, if you're going to go in order, it's Salt Lake City, um, Orange County, Potomac, and then New York. New York, y'all still got some work to do. Um, but anyway, um, for, without further ado, let's get into the episode. Before I get into the episode, I know this is delayed. Um, the main reason why it is slightly delayed is simply because um, this is my favorite franchise. And so I watched this one out of all of them. Probably. I, so I watched this one last because I just knew it was going to be good. Number one. Number two. I watched it like twice. It was so good. And I laughed so many times. It was just, it's, it's so good to me. Anyway, let's get into it. Pardon me. Let's get into the episode. So it is um, day two in Milwaukee and the producers are producing. They are killing it. They show the sitcom style of the ladies touring Milwaukee. So like um, most of the ladies are at the Miller um, Brewery. Um, like in the plant part of it, the factory part, and they're just like pretending they're like beer workers, have these outfits on, and it's hilarious. And they just, you know, they're introducing all of them as if it's like a sitcom. And then like three of the ladies are curling and they're showing like the best, and it's like kind of black and white and all well, not black and white, but kind of like the actually the theme of it was Laverne and Shor Shirley. So it was very Laverne and Shirley-ish, and it comes up more than once. Like, it was a whole entire thing. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, the show then officially does start, and we get the housewives montage of all the women waking up, getting ready for day two. Um, and Bronwyn is recapping the conversation that she had with Heather and Lisa to her husband. And she's hopeful that they can move forward, but she was seriously hurt about you know what happened with her and um lisa heather she's just like we did not start off on a good note but hopefully we can move on and then we see that um whitney because th th this is her trip that she's hosting she's going kind of like from person to person kind of explaining things but we first see her with mary and mary this episode mvp MVP like she was oh my gosh <laughs> Mary this version of Mary her being like not as uptight and her just being herself but it's like kind of toned down but still Mary it's child it is chef's kiss you can tell she's in a much better space this time around but maybe because certain people aren't on the show anymore um, she feels a little bit more open and comfortable and whatnot. And, um, side note, I actually watched an ET interview with, with Mary and it was actually very, very good. Like she definitely has, um, done some work as far as like interviewing and stuff like that. She was an amazing interview. She was very transparent and truthful about what's going on with her son and all the rumors. It was when it comes to her church her you know her husband and all that stuff it was so if you get a chance check that out it she really is i i see growth and that's what i love about it it's growth the wigs are better her makeup's better her, like 10 out of 10 anyway <laughs> so um mary is getting ready and she's basically just straining like um parts of her hair um, with a straightening comb and Whitney genu genuinely did not know what it was so, like she didn't know what straightening comb was and Mary not being like she decided not to be snarky she's like it, this is a straightening comb she's like this is what black girls use like just kind of as a matter of fact and and then um basically then Whitney is then explaining well she's explaining to Mary but then we see Mary, um Whitney in the confessional 
So she's actually explaining to us, the audience, their plans for the day. So, but in the process of doing this, she's definitely shading um, Meredith and her lackluster um, drag type situation that she had last year. And um, so we find out they're going to go to Miller Brewery um, for like a private tour um, in the back and sorry, in the beer caves with, and they're going to be doing a beer and cheese tasting. And then from there, they're going to go to the Harley Davidson museum and they're actually going to eat at the Harley Davidson museum, which that's not normally a thing, but she got the hookup. And then last but not least, they're going to go to is this is it, which is the, um, oldest drag, um, oldest gay bar. Um, one of the oldest gay bars in the Midwest, actually actually maybe in the country i think the last episode they says one of the oldest gay bars in the country but i think it actually is in milwaukee but i'm not sure um you might have to fact check me on that because i don't remember exactly but this is where trixie's at and um so she's hosting the event there but like i guess technically all the ladies are hosting it because they're all there so anyway and one thing i did um what i got from this scene was that i am loving that mary and whitney are getting along like them two getting along and really just seeing Mary being much softer this season, it's, again, chef's kiss. Anyway, and so then from there, we see that Meredith goes to pay Lisa a visit and then shares with um, Lisa what happened last night. So this was like, a this was footage that we didn't see. So they show this unaired footage um, where Basically, Whitney and Angie approach Meredith and then ask Meredith should, I mean, kind of airing their grievances about what they got going on with Lisa. And then basically ask Meredith, should you trust Lisa? And Meredith is feeling away about this, number one, because one, she's like, why would you come to me of all people? You know, Mer you know, like Lisa and I we've known each other the longest on this show. Like, and we knew each other way before this show. Like we actually used to be actually real life friends. And we have, we finally did patch up our issues that we had from two seasons ago. Like, and Lisa has not done anything else. So there's no reason for us to go back and forth. And that's what Meredith literally says to Lisa. She's like, yeah, I, you know, so I, so she basically told um, Lisa everything and Lisa was pissed pissed but i was even thinking the same thing too like i didn't know what angie and whitney thought that was gonna do it was really odd i don't get it um i'm thinking the only guess i have is maybe they are trying to isolate them two for it to be them two and kind of get them out of there. Cause we know housewives, like in real life, a lot of these women, they're not really friends. So there are alliances a lot of times with these housewife shows. And also too, because it is alliances, it literally is kind of like um, housewives meet survivor. So maybe they're trying to, I, I don't know. I, I'm not, I can't figure it out, but I guess hopefully as the season progress, we'll figure out what, why that was. But anyway, Lisa was upset. So then next, um, we see that Whitney then goes to pay Heather a visit and Heather su surprises her with, um, these matching sweaters that are like the Laverne and Shirley sweaters. Again, this is the theme, this episode, especially Heather, Heather's Heather is pushing this theme and, um, Heather states in her confessional that she they're having such a great time this trip so far she doesn't want to ruin it um letting you know whitney know what's going on as far as the rumors about her business but she can tell that meredith didn't do it so she wants to do it um so that she doesn't you know find out by about it blindly um but she did, doesn't do it here yet and so that's kind of what happens here but you kind of have an idea that is going to happen this episode um, and then from there, Whitney goes to pay Lisa a visit and Lisa's mood says it all because clearly this was all done in order and Lisa already got talked to by Meredith. So Lisa is literally trying her hardest to pay Whitney dust. And so she's like, Whitney's trying to give her the itinerary and 
Lisa's like, oh, no, no, no. Um, yeah, I'm not going to be going. Um, I'm actually going to be doing something else instead. But thank you, though. And, um, and like, Whitney's completely puzzled, doesn't understand what's happening. And so then she's like, no, no, no. I'm just going to do something else. I'll just meet you at dinner or whatever. Um, and I can't talk in Lisa Barl voice, so I'm not even going to try it. But you get the gist. And so Whitney's actually puzzled. So she's like, okay. And so then we then see that they head to the um, sprinter van so they can go to the um, beer caves. But then immediately they notice that Whitney and Millie are missing. And it turns out Lisa invited them to, to go curling with her. And I thought it was rude. Okay, Lisa, girl, like, it's rude to kind of hijack someone's trip and do all that. So I wasn't really happy with that, number one. But at the same time, Whitney literally did the same thing to Meredith last season. So because it's Whitney and Whitney has literally done the same thing before, I don't feel away all the way. But at the same time, it was just kind of corny to me, to me. Because I'm not going to let someone, like, stop me from having a good time. And their plan B, it wasn't it. You can go, you could do, you can go curling anywhere. Like you can't go to like the bat, like to the beer caves anywhere. Cause they're not like everywhere. And Miller is like a legendary, like beer, like, but I guess if you're not from Midwest, you're not as aware. And we find out Lisa was not aware, <laughs> but anyway. Um, so, and also too, I just felt a way that because Lisa's beefing, beefing with them, she kind of stopped the other two ladies from having a good time and experience something that is very exclusive to Milwaukee. Uh, I know Milwaukee is just Milwaukee, I guess, when it comes a lot of people, but there are, if you're into like beer tasting and cheese and stuff like that, very Midwest stuff, Milwaukee is a good place for that. Um, I'm not really a cheese person, but I am a beer person. So I would have definitely would rather go to the beer garden than like, or beer anything over curling. Cause I mean, you could literally go curling anywhere. There's an ice skating rink. You could go curling, but anyway, so then, um, Bronwyn shades, um, Lisa in the confessional for this move because Bronwyn's like, what does she do? Just like the first two people she saw, she invited. And I'm like, and did, um, <laughs> but in person, when they're in the sprinter van, Bronwyn thinks she might be the reason, but then, um, Angie also states, well, she's not really good with her either. And talks about the last one on one they had. And then Angie stays in her confessional, and I didn't know this, but she's known Lisa for like 15 years, and this is very hurtful. Now, did you know her for 15 years, or were y'all friends for 15 years? Because there's a difference. But anyway, neither here nor there. And then Mary asks, like, she hasn't talked to you since then? Like, and that's another thing. Mary this season is fully engaged. And her being a fully engaged, present Mary on the scene with these ladies, it is literally chef's kiss. Like other franchises wish they had a Mary on their show. Like, I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm not, this is not a Mary Stan account. Don't get it twisted. But like, she just has this personality that is one of a kind. She's one of one. And there's not that many housewives are one of one, like Nene Leakes, one of one. I'm not comparing her to Nene Leakes, but there aren't that many housewives that, or that dynamic where you, you're not going to get them anywhere else type situation, if that makes sense. But anyway, so from there, um, sorry, my cat is trying to eat my hair. So I'm like literally trying to avoid my cat. Okay. Anyway, so then from there, um, we do find out that, um, cause Whitney was like, the only thing I could think of is like, Wait, and then Whitney's like, Meredith, did you tell Lisa what me and Angie talked to you about? And Meredith probably is like, yep, I sure did. She's like, you know, I'm not, Lisa and I vowed when we decided we were going to rekindle our friendship, anything that could potentially come between us and our friendship, we share with each other. And so therefore I did. And so they were like, well, there it is. That's why she isn't here. <laughs> Answer that question. 
So next we have Lisa, Brittany, and Ellie, and they're at the curling place and they think and they thank the employer for squeezing them in at the last minute. And then, then Lisa explains why is if this employee cares what's going on. But then the employee, um, because what she states also, she tells the employee where the others are going to the beer cave. And the employee states like, the beer caves are kind of a big deal here. And she was like, wait, they are? And you could tell Lisa was actually genuine. Like she was actually shocked. She was actually shocked, like truly shocked. She's like, wait a minute. So you, I feel like a piece of her was kind of irritated that she missed out on something that like is a thing. Um, because let's face it, Lisa's that type of person who really would be into making sure she's doing something trendy. And so she can't, she did miss out all because of the fact that she couldn't fake it till she made it. I mean, she really should have did that, but anyway. And you deny the other two of experiencing it also, which I'm I'm annoyed at Lisa for that as well. But anyway, so then from there, the rest of the ladies are at the cave and it's super cool. I mean, actually the way they showed it, it was super cool. No pun intended. <laughs> I know it was a horrible joke. But then from there we see um, back at Lisa. Um, so Lisa, um, Brittany and Melly, they're curling and Lisa is shading Whitney in the confessional. She's like, you know, although they're doing, you know, the beer cave thing, I'm sure it's cool, but this, what we're doing is at least I don't have to deal with Whitney. And I just don't understand this beef between Whitney and Lisa. I think it's really, really dumb and petty, but I think I actually enjoy it also because all the beefs on this show are dumb and petty. Like, None of them are dark, overly serious. I'm glad that they finally got rid of all of that kind of energy off of the franchise. And hopefully it stays that way. Fingers crossed. But anyway, so we find out, though, in this scene that Melly is actually really, really good at curling. And um, we find out also the reason why is because she's a former junior Olympian or like she was trying to do that. Um, and she was an ice skater when she was like little and like was doing the junior Olympics of it all. And then she quit. So she was like, yeah, so I feel like at home when I'm on ice. I'm like, that's awesome. Um, and it was really the first time that Millie had the confessional. So there's that anyway. And then back at, um, the bad cave, they start not bad cave. Wow. I, I've been fighting saying that I've been wanting to say bad cave instead of beer cave. But anyway, so, and by the way, it is an actual cave that they're in. Um, and they do explain why. It's because, um, you know, Miller is one of the oldest beers, like, made in the United States. And um, it was before refrigeration. So a cave would be how you would get that done. Um, but anyway. So the they're doing the beer and cheese tasting. And the first beer that they introduce is Miller High Life. <laughs> and... Um, they have the housewives raise a hand who has never had beer before. Mary has never had beer before. And then they are joking about it being the champagne of beers. And I hope Mary was just being funny. Um, I think she was, I think she's very aware. Um, but like she took it seriously. Wait, this is really the champagne of beer. So she's thinking she's drinking some upper class beer and we know what Miller High Life is. That is not upper class beer. <laughs> That's beer I used to drink while I was in college. Um, <laughs> when I did not know any better. But anyway, she she says she likes it, but that's the only reason why I think she says she liked it because it's the champagne of beers, and so it was it was kind of funny. Um, and I, and I cackled. I really did cackle. But then after that, but we really find out that Mary actually does love the summer shandy the most, which I agree. Summer shandy is really really good. Um, and so they're joking like, wow, I guess we're going to become beer drinkers instead. <laughs> and I'm like, wow, housewives being beer drinkers. Um, you don't think of it that way. But anyway, so back at the curling, Brittany is talking about Jared yet again. And we find out that Brittany was trying to make an excuse for the brow girl thing and said that they were on a break, you know, one of their 16 different breakups that they've had. And Jared keeps texting her, 
but she's not she has not texted her back text him back because she wants to understand why she keeps choosing like these type of guys basically guys that already have one foot out the door in her words and lisa is trying to talk some sense into her and truthfully we find out towards the end of this episode literally all of them been trying to talk some sense into her and she just is not having it and child previews for next episode she does meet up with jared and she is back at it again with this dude after her whole entire speech she had towards the end of this episode like girl there child there's no helping her the only thing that can help her is some therapy anyway um so then um bronwyn shares with the ladies that todd actually used to work for miller when he was in college and um she does like kind of joke about like i wasn't around that was happening but yeah i mean he used to work for miller like one summer he was just working there and um so he was actually they trained at the cave and stuff for a couple weeks and stuff like that they so basically he worked at a different location but they took him to that for the training and so that that's cool um and then in the confessional like bronwyn also jokes about like the age difference she always jokes about it. and towards the end i mean it's happening because it's gonna it's there's foreshadowing here towards the end it's gonna come up again and not by her so there's that so then from there um we then see that um they're done with the tasting and so the host of the um tour is like hey do you want to hear about the ghost stories here like there's been some ghost sightings so then they go to like kind of the bar where then they do this have this talk about the ghost stories and the everyone goes minus whitney and heather aka bad weather and bad weather they're just like yeah we're gonna be in our laverne and shirley and they're just happy to kind of just have time to themselves and kind of do like their um new cousins thing that they do and so they're talking about go so back at the um bar um the lady starts going into the ghost stories but before that i think she asked about anyone has you know are familiar with milwaukee and both um, meredith and mary they always raise their hands because both their dads are from milwaukee which i didn't know that but that also now explains why they've been so close for years that's probably what brought them together but anyway because meredith and uh, mary for the longest were like two like that was the only person that mary would hang out with on the show for most of the time and but now that actually explains why but anyway and i don't remember if it came up in previous seasons or not i'll have to go back i don't remember but but this after this mary shares the whole entire story that she shared with us already in the confessional about her dad and the jeffrey dahmer story <laughs> when i tell you angie almost puked right then and there because she went into way more graphic detail this time about the bodies and them being burnt and all that i was like oh my god and then as she's doing all this everyone bronwyn was like i don't think any ghost story is topping what mary just said <laughs> and yeah i would agree i don't think so either i think mary won that but then in the confessional mary is like yeah hopefully my dad wasn't lying but he might have been lying about that because my dad used to lie sometimes <laughs> I was like, <laughs> i'm sorry i die I about i was drinking water originally while i was watching this episode when she said that i spit it out i was like oh my god mary anyway so then um heather back with heather and whitney heather actually states how great of a job whitney did on the trip but then she does break the news about the rumors about her business prism and like the jury being from you know not the best of sources and um and whitney is rightfully so super offended because she's and then she explains like no like it's like a normal commerce business that's not it i don't like that this was even suggested and heather then asked her not to say anything to meredith 
um, at the Sprinter van because she did say that Meredith is the one who told her. But like Whitney's like, she did not come from a good place telling me that. She's like, and Whitney called it out, which I would I called it out in my last review. Meredith is at it again. She literally does this every single season. And it just I don't even understand like why Heather just went along with it. Like I don't get it. Like anyway. So then um the um oh so Melly, Brittany, and Lisa, they get back to the hotel first. And on the Sprinter van, though, it is dead silent because Whitney is trying to hold back saying anything. But then she does call Melly to kind of let the ladies know, hey, you need to get ready at this time um, for us to go to the Harley Davidson Museum. And so, therefore, um, they do end up showing back up at the um, hotel, all the rest of the ladies, and they basically have an hour of free time and they basically are off to leaving again. Fast forward. Whitney didn't waste any time. <laughs> They're literally in the Sprinter van on the way to the Harley Davidson Museum. And she puts it out there immediately. She's like, yeah, this trip was so great until I heard that people are talking about my business. And then immediately it goes left. And right then and there, it is Meredith versus Whitney. And everyone's just like ping ponging, watching them go back and forth. Cause honestly, once they started really, really going at it, it was so like annoying that I could not make out any of the words that they were saying. Like it was just one of, it just literally sounded like, well, what Mary was just playing. And Mary literally, <laughs> Mary did this not only in her confessional, she was doing that right there. Didn't care who saw her doing that of them two going back and forth. Like the the um, puppet hands going. Nah, 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 nah. And then Bronwyn's just shocked. Like what is happening? And so that's how that goes. And then from there. Then they do get to the Harley Davidson Museum. And this is where we find out that Whitney's a huge Harley Davidson girl. Like, I guess her and her husband goes to Sturgis every year, which I'm kind of like, hmm, interesting. Um, and then also then goes, like, she's just one of those. Like, she just really loves a Harley Davidson. Like, her, her and her husband, that's just their thing. And so she's like, in her head, she's in heaven. And Bronwyn is just like shocked and kind of genuinely confused of like, how do they go from basically going all the way off on each other in the Sprinter van to being on their best behaviors if nothing happened in this museum? And I literally wrote, welcome to the housewives show. This is just what they do. Like you got, welcome to the housewives. <laughs> so from there, they do, um, after they do the tour, and the tour seemed pretty cool. Um, it still wouldn't be my cup of tea because I'm just not a Harley person. Like, I, I don't, yeah, it's never been my thing. But anyway, so the girl, everyone sits down, and then Whitney shares, like, you know, I had this jury that I wanted to give to everyone. You know, whether you want it or not, you can always take it back, I guess. Um, and it was a jury from her, you know, her business, Prism. And um, she was like, and then she basically explains, this is why I was offended by the rumors that are being displayed because I work hard for my business. And genuine, like, you know, rightfully so. And then she goes right back to Meredith again about the whole thing. And Meredith, of course, is she owning up to anything? Uh, No, she's not. She still is saying she was trying to help her, even though, oh, side note, we find out from Whitney that this rumor came from one social media website and it spread. And when she has someone investigate the site, one of the people that investigate asked if it was one of her friends site, AKA Meredith. And this is not the first time Meredith has been accused of doing this. She's actually done this quite, she's literally, have been accused of doing this every single season. So yeah, anyway, 
So as they're going back and forth, forth and back, Lisa decides to jump in because we know Lisa ain't seen it for Whitney right now. And Whitney, which I was proud of, and I wish she would have been able to stay stand in it, checked her. It was like, I am talking to Meredith. Your name's not Meredith. I am talking to her. I'm not talking to you. W let's have this one-on-one -on -one conversation and don't get other people involved. Because Meredith actually like kind of slickly tried to get Lisa involved. And so Lisa jumped right in. And it worked for a second. And then Lisa was like, oh, no, no, no. I'm jumping in this. And so now it goes from being about Meredith versus Lisa to Lisa's versus, um, sorry, it goes from Lisa, sorry, it goes from Whitney versus Meredith to now Whitney versus Lisa. And Lisa is just going off saying this and this and, uh, but guess who enters the chat then there? Angie enters the chat because Lisa then it brings up the grievances that she had about how, um, Whitney and Angie are warning Meredith about her and that she's not a good friend. And both of them, both Whitney and um, Angie are like, well, you're not a good friend. And from there, it goes from being them two versus um, Lisa to just Angie versus Lisa. And Angie, Angie was able to take her like, and, but it stopped abruptly because then Lisa decides to bring up Electra. Her and that is um Angie's daughter in the argument. And it was very weirdly placed and it definitely did not come from a good place. And so after that everyone was like, "Oh, like clutching the pearls at this moment because everyone was like, "You brought the kids into this?" And we know how Angie is when it comes to her family. She's like, oh, no, no, no. You just brought the kids into this. And then so from there, it's kind of quiet for a second. And then <laughs> Mary's trying to help with the, like, help with this. She's like, y'all, it's getting real emotional right now. It's getting real emotional right now. But y'all love each other. Y'all love each other. <laughs> and then out of nowhere, Brittany's like, I want to make another toast. And they're like, oh, Lord. <laughs> but hey, this was what was needed because we they needed to cut that tension. And um, Whitney's like, I had an epiphany. And that's why it's called an epiphany. And then we, the producer, shady producers, flash back to all the times during the day she kept saying she had an epiphany. That she should be sing, she should be not in relationship with anyone and work on herself. So what kills me is she knows this, but she's not doing that. <laughs> and so she kept saying that and they're all like, yeah, we're proud of you. And then we find out even Mary tried to give her like sound advice on this whole thing. And she was like, I just assume you weren't going to listen to me. So I went back to sleep. <laughs> I was like, But then in the confessional, <laughs> Mary's like, child, this is going to last for a day or two. And then she's going to be back with that man. I, I bet you anything she's going to be back with that man. I was like. <laughs> Mary. Oh my gosh. Mary, this episode was killing me. And then from there on. Um, Whitney. So then Brittany's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have an epiphany. And then Bronwyn's like, I really hope this time you, you know, you really are going to do the right thing this time. And then Brittany decides she's just going to kind of go at it with a Bronwyn. And I'm going to hold you. It was given jealousy. Um, and even like Whitney called it out. Um, because Brittany was like, so what about your, because what, what so how it came up and what came up is Bronwyn was asking a genuine question. Are you in love with this man? Or are you in love with the fact that he's an Osman? And that was a genuine question. And that's another thing too. In the confessional, Lisa has such a good point. She's like, he's not even like the Osman. He's like a D-list Osman. Like he's not even the one. And um, so Lisa really wants her to just move on. And so does everyone else. But anyway, so then Bronwyn takes, so 
Whitney takes offense to that till Bronwyn asking the question. But Bronwyn was, I don't think Bronwyn was actually was trying, she, I don't think she was trying to be shady. I think she really was genuinely asking her a question. And then Brittany tries to flip it on her in like the most stereotypical way. It was like, well, why do, are you with your husband? And Bronwyn had all the time in the world for her, but she was, she went easy on her. She really went easy on her because Bronwyn was like, you know, if she would have given me something more than the most low hanging fruit of reeds, I would be like, okay, it's time to play. But this, this isn't even it. So <laughs> I was like, Bronwyn, Bronwyn her confessional shade, she is killing it. She, she, she's shady and I love it. And, um, so, but the thing is when Whitney, so when Brittany is doing all this, unbeknownst to her, she's actually fending Whitney too. Cause Whitney and Bronwyn have a lot in common. And that's one of those things when it comes to husband situation, but they actually do genuinely love their husbands, even though there there's an age difference. And I'm actually kind of surprised that Mary didn't take anything to it. But I think Mary at this point, she's just not going to give her anything because it's very clear that this Brittany lady is super unhinged. It's not even worth it. And but at the end of the day, I kind of get why Bronwyn is entertaining it just a little bit because since they're two newbies, they, they, they should spar with each other probably, you know? Even though Bronwyn seems like she could, she'll spar with anyone. I think she's got it. Um, but so something happens here where it goes from like, so basically Bronwyn's like, okay, so you're going to try to like say I'm a gold digger. But Bronwyn explains more like, she does kind of joke about it and make it more seem like she could be one, but she's like, no, I'm not like, I love my husband. Don't, don't play with me. Like she kind of says it like that, but then Heather tries to then question it again. And then actually you see that Meredith's like, let it go, leave it alone. Like we're not in their situation. Like relationships, like significant other relationships should be off the limits. And yeah, she's right. But then Whitney, had a good read in her confessional too she's like i just hate when women when women do this and it happens to me all the time too and typically the women who do this are the ones that want what they what um what you have and i was like that's a word because they're both clearly in happy relationships it seems like whitney and her husband have patched things up like and you know their husbands are doing all right yeah and but i think the difference is bronwyn has her stuff together and is not unhinged <laughs> but anyway um so side note i i do want to share one thing i i think i think britney if she can handle it i think she should be a full-time housewife um because i really do genuinely think she's unhinged but it it's cringy but at the same time up until a certain point, it was very entertaining. Um, I am a little, and also too, I just want to learn more of her story and why she's such like a, and I think I even said it in my last video. And by the way, um, shout out to, I need to look who um, made the comment last week in one of my videos. Um, I can't find it at the moment, but I did have someone comment on my video last week or actually the week before kind of helping me understand the Mormon culture of like, yeah, this shelterness is very common. And even Lisa in this episode shared the same sentiment. Like this is a very common and unfortunate thing where the women just rely on men and the men are everything. And it's like the most patriotic, like it's patriarchy thing ever very like just ill um so for someone like me who's very much the opposite of that i like <laughs> i could never understand it probably but um yeah anyway um so somehow after basically after meredith states like to leave it alone um the ladies do decide it's time to get changed get ready to go to drag show and the ladies put put it all together like they put you know, put everything aside. And that's what they did. They went to this drag show and Bronwyn <laughs> is wearing this super campy outfit. And 
I hate to say this, but I agree with Mary when it comes to this. It is giving costume. But the thing is, if you're going to go camp and wear a costume, you will do the, that's where you would do it at. You would do it at a drag show or a Halloween party. So it actually checks out. She's literally wearing a hot dog suit, but it's like like a Paris, like original hot dog suit type situation. And so it works. It works for the environment they're going to. But the episode pretty much ends where they're partying at the drag show, having good time. And um, they kind of even end it as if it's like a Laverne and Shirley show because we know that Heather is usually the narrator and she, she narrate the very end of it. I will say this though, Heather, I know you feel a way that Bronwyn is that girl, but you better leave her alone. Like, I think she actually is a real deal and you coming after her, it's not looking the way you think it looks. I think you think you look good doing that. You don't, honey. Because so far, I mean, it's only been four episodes, but I'm liking Bronwyn. I like her more than you, like truthfully. Um, I've always, I mean, honestly, ever since you pulled that whole entire stunt of Lion and all the things you were doing leading up to this season, I will always side-eye you. Yes, you had the timeline receipts and all that. That was iconic, but... You needed help with that. You needed someone to be, for you to be against to do all that. And yeah, anyway, um, I, I want to read her more, but I'm not going to. I'm going to leave it alone. And also too, it's, it's late. <laughs> I'm actually, girl's tired. But anyway, that does conclude the video. Please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. It's your girl Sharon, aka The Melon Nostalgic Runner. And I will see you next time. Bye.